Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of learning to jump into taking action even when you don't feel like it in those moments when you want to put off important tasks that you know will benefit you long term. We all have those moments when we have something important we need to get done, but we keep putting it off and making excuses. It could be that assignment you've been waiting to finish, that daily workout that you keep putting off because you feel lazy, the list continues. We know what we must do, we know the benefits, but we simply keep putting it off because we don't feel like doing it in the moment. The reality of the situation from a psychological point of view is that our brains do their best to avoid anything that feels like pain. If something is perceived as too difficult or too much work, our brains automatically perceive it as pain and we avoid it. Successful people, however, know that exactly in those moments that they don't feel like doing something, that they must snap into action and get it done. Not only will your future self thank you for being productive, but importantly, you will learn to become the type of person who has the discipline to push through laziness. As Tony Robbins quotes, it's been said that there are only two pains in life, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret, and that discipline weighs ounces while regret weighs tons. Stay tuned coming up after the break. And speaking about your product, it's between a hot drink and a cocktail, which I love. So talk to us about your products and the different flavors that you offer. Yes, yeah, so I have a coffee problem. I mean, I love coffee, I'm a diva, as well as cocktails. So it's no surprise that this is where we ended up. And you're right, this is a traditional K-cup that fits in any single serve brewing system. And inside are, is liquid, so let me show you, for the because people get sort of confused. This is liquid concentrated brew here. Um, so liquid distilled spirits, a variety of them, concentrated coffee, all the coffees are decaf because we're, you know, we're chill, laid back, afternoon, evening drinking. And then a variety of natural concentrated flavors. Uh, so the proofs are between like 60 and 76, and then you just dilute it. However much water you add and add your finishing touches uh, makes the drink stronger or weaker, depending on what you want. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Lucinda Wright, the co-founder and CEO of the cocktail brand Cask & Kettle USA. Lucinda, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm having a fabulous day. I hope you are as well. Thanks for having me. I'm having a fabulous day. By the way, Lucinda, I love your product. You know, before we get into the product, let's talk about your entrepreneurial journey. When did you have that aha moment that you wanted to bring this product to the market? Well, I think my journey is maybe a little bit different than a lot of people. I turned 59 years old last summer. So I would say that my entrepreneurial journey has been a slow evolution. I've worked for a number of really great companies and I had, I've led innovation teams at four of them. So I built a long career that's led me to this point. One of the other co-founders said to me when we started this that our careers and the experiences that we've had have led us to this moment. So mine's you know, a long 25 years to get to entrepreneurial startup. Absolutely. And of course, with any product, it's all about marketing and branding. So what was the first steps that you took to kind of take this to the market and to consumers? Yeah, and I, I have a really strong point of view about that first step. So I come out of CPG marketing and I grew up uh, understanding that my role as a consumer advocate. So we love the idea, otherwise we, we wouldn't you know, be doing it now. But the very first step we took, the first check I wrote out of my bank account was online quantitative consumer testing to make sure that other people love the idea as much as we did. Also, for those budding entrepreneurs out there, when you do upfront testing, you get a better sense, not only of the business idea and validity of it, but you can test out the line of drinks. Like I tested all of the brews that we did and described them and said, you know, do you, does this sound like you would love this? I tested the, the pricing. We did the branding and the look and feel. We, we did different target groups. 
So right up front, we got a lot of information about the business that helped me make really tough business decisions uh, throughout the launch. Uh, because you have to make tough ones, but when you start from a data-driven, sort of grounded in objective viewpoints that aren't just yours, it makes it a little bit easier to make the right ones. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think that's really important is to do your research and really yes. know your industry before getting into it. I think it definitely helps, and especially getting a feel for what consumers like. And speaking about your product, it's between a hot drink and a cocktail, which I love. So talk to us about your products and the different flavors that you offer. Yes, yeah, so I have a coffee problem. I mean, I <laughs> love coffee, I'm a diva, as well as cocktails, so it's no surprise that this is where we ended up. And you're right, this is a traditional K-cup that fits in any single serve brewing system. And inside are, is liquid, so let me show you, for the because people get sort of confused. This is liquid concentrated brew here. Um, so liquid distilled spirits, a variety of them, concentrated coffee, all the coffees are decaf because we're, you know, we're chill, laid back, afternoon, evening drinking. And then a variety of natural concentrated flavors. Uh, so the proofs are between like 60 and 76 and then you just dilute it. However much water you add and add your finishing touches uh, makes the drink stronger or weaker depending on what you want. Mm -hmm. And you have a number of recipes on your website. So let's talk about this. And also, can you serve this hot and cold? Yes. So because it's liquid, I love everything hot. I, I do, no question about it. But I have people on my team, we certainly have consumers who like it cold. Because it's liquid and it's intended to go through the Keurig, that's hot, the hot version. But if you want it cold, you just pour it into the mug like I did, add ice, add cold water, add whatever finishing touches and do, you know, make it however you want to do it. So with machine, with hot or cold water, without the machine, either way, it's all good. Mm -hmm. And you have quite a number of flavors as well. Yes. Let's talk about the different flavors. Okay, so iconic, Irish coffee, right? Very iconic. Uh, the aspirant was uh, the Buena Vista Cafe in San Francisco. That was the aspirant formula for us. So Irish whiskey, we do add a little bit of vodka, which is you know not traditional, but the whiskey can be just a little bit rough. Um, espresso, coffee, and then a little raw sugar, because a traditional Irish coffee has a lump of sugar. And then the once you make it, you just add the, the cream floater at the end if you want to go fully traditional. So delicious, iconic drink. Then we have a Mexican coffee for the tequila lovers. So it's very tequila forward, like a silver tequila, as a Colombian roast coffee, little Mexican chocolate flavor notes, and on the very, very end, your super sophisticated palate, it's a little bit of a berry note, like a tequila rosé. Mm -hmm. Then we have a mint patty, which is like a liquefied York peppermint patty in your mouth with vodka. So you have that minty, dark chocolate yumminess uh, with the dark roast coffee. We have hot blonde, my aunt can never remember, she calls it hot mama every <laughs> time, but hot blonde, which is vodka based, um, a light roast coffee and like a multi vanilla, add a little cream to that and it's like a boozy Starbucks vanilla latte really, very sessionable. And then we have a cider, so no coffee, it's a Michigan dry cider with vodka, a little bit of cinnamon, just like, you know, tasting liquid fall in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I love the blonde one, by the way. That one is my favorite flavor. <laughs> and you know, on your on your website, you also have food recipes, which I find yes. interesting. So tell us yes. about some of the yes. food recipes you can make with your product. Yeah, so all the recipes are basically what I like to eat, just FYI. So we have um, some frosting. So these are all 21 plus, right? These are adult, adult recipes. So our uh, frostings that are made with our Irish coffee and Mexican, so good. Like, I implore you to try it. It's just that good. And then we have adult um, dressings like vinaigrettes. Delicious. We have um, tiramisu. Tiramisu, instead of the espresso, ours brewed up. So good. Compotes, affogados, wow. you know, plenty, plenty to eat, but it is for the adult crowd. Yeah. 
I love that for tiramisu. I didn't think about that. I love to make tiramisu. So you know what? I'm going to use this next time. <laughs> That's a very good idea. And you know, you partnered up with Temperance Distilling. So let's talk about that partnership and how they helped you develop Cask and Kettle. Yes, yeah, so there, there aren't very many distilleries that have the flexibility to put liquid brew in a, in a K-cup. And Temperance has a very innovative mindset, which is unusual for a distillery and a, and a plant. Very entrepreneurial. All of the recipes are ours, uh, so we develop them, but they help just bring it to life and commercialize it. And they've been an invaluable partner. It's very difficult when you're when you're defining a new category because hot cocktails don't exist in the U.S. It's a brand new category, and it takes some convincing of established buyers, established distributors, established distilleries to get their head around hot. And Temperance has just been really a gift. So what I love about Cask and Kettle is that it's certified by the Women's Business Enterprise as mostly female-led. We love female-led companies here. So what's your favorite part of working with other successful women entrepreneurs? Well, in the spirits uh, world, less than 1% of the businesses are owned and operated by women. And it's, um, so it's especially low, but you know, women owned and operated companies, I don't need to tell you, are, are in the minority any, anyway, but it's certainly within alcohol. And it's nice to have a network of other people who just understand the barriers, understand the trials and tribulations, and frankly, also a place to go and celebrate the wins. And I find that my fellow women CEO and founders really want to help. Like if you need help, they are there to do so. And it can be a little bit lonely as a woman. You know, you're not really allowed to say you're not certain or you don't know or you're worried about something. It's just it's just not allowed, frankly. And so there's a safe haven there to reach out to other very successful, super women, fabulous women who can help you as a sounding board um, work through your thinking. Mm. And you know, in any entrepreneurial journey, the, there's highs and lows. So let's talk about some of the challenges that you face, you know, in hopes to inspire other entrepreneurs out there hearing your story. What were some challenges that you faced when you first got your product on the market and how did you get through it? I think what is true for any startup, regardless of your product, or service, it doesn't really matter. Um, the, I think the biggest barrier is everybody else's mindset mm. because you're dealing always with bigger partners, always. And big companies kill small things. Mm -hmm. So everyone, you know, people don't want to invest in you until you get big. They don't want to make your product until you get big. I mean, you're a risk to everybody. So dealing with that negative mindset and that prove it to me mindset, I think is a common challenge for any startup CEO to work through. And then when you're creating a new category, as I was mentioning earlier, it's even that slightly you know, more hard because you're doing something that really they don't have a frame of reference about. So you have to convince them to believe in you, okay. which actually going back to the consumer testing, super helpful to be able to pull out, mm -hmm. hey, it's not just my point of view. It's not just my golden palette. All of these other people are excited and want, want mm -hmm. this as well. So I would say that that is a huge challenge uh, that not only we face, but I, I have to think that any startup would face. Yeah, absolutely, because this is an interesting product. There are not that many products that have the blend that you have. So I, I'm sure there were challenges when getting into it, but now you're successful. What's been one of the biggest highlights for you being an entrepreneur and creating Cask and Kettle? Well, it, what's interesting is from a business perspective, we are now, to your point, we're accepted into several national chains. And that's, um, you know, that's thrilling. For, for any startup to be in Walmart in the U.S., Jewel, Meyer, Kroger, uh, and that certainly is a is a win uh, for any business. But to be honest, the most satisfying my number is the number on our website. You get directly to me if you reach out and contact us. And the most satisfying win, if you will, for me is the call from a consumer saying, "Hey, got five kids." We put them down at night for bed. My wife and I reconnect. She likes her hot blonde. I like the Irish coffee. And we just kick back and relax. 
thanks for making these drinks. Um, we really enjoy them. It's those types of calls and that feedback that helps me push through the challenges and the, and the you know the hard business circumstances and, and as you're growing a company. Um, but certainly externally, the you know having the the approval of very large uh, retailers is you know not not bad at all either. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know before getting becoming an entrepreneur. Um, you've had a lot of expertise in this field as well. So let's talk about, you know, what advice would you have for a young entrepreneur getting into this industry that has a great idea, but is not really sure how to bring it to the market? Well, what's interesting is I'm judging a pitch competition tonight for oh. the young entrepreneurs at my alma mater. So wow. I, I do coach and mentor a lot. Um, and while I'm old and the other founders are old, my team is all in their 30s. As a matter of fact, the younger generation, I'm impressed on how entrepreneurial they really are. It's exciting for me, sort of at the end of my career, to see so much really smart uh, thinking and excitement in, in the younger generations. So the number one advice I have is always that you have to believe, right? So if you believe in what you're doing, at the core, you're going to have to go to that bedrock all the time because the rest of the world seems to be very negative. You know, everyone is why you shouldn't do it, can't do it, won't work, you're too little, you're too whatever, whatever. So you have to have it in your own heart and you have to have a mindset that is this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And so you've got to pace that out and then ask for help. I mean, smart people ask for help from family and friends. I do find that uh, I've never been turned down if I say to someone, hey, you know, can you help me think through this? Or what do you think? Or I need X, Y, Z. I mean, most people want to give you a hand up. So believe, long-term vision, ask for help, take it, listen, be coachable. I learn every day at 59. I'm shocked, uh, you know, I think I thought I'd seen it all. Every day I'm reminded that, no, I haven't. And I, and I learned something new all the time from those around me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's such great advice, especially being coachable. I think that that's one of the biggest things as an entrepreneur or just in, in general, just to succeed in anything is to be coachable and not think you know everything, right? Because there's always that's more to learn. And, and that's the joy of life, right? Is learning and evolving and growing. So I really like that piece of advice. For our viewers internationally, where can they buy Cask and Kettle and learn more about the product? Well, so the pandemic um, has thrown sort of a wrench in a lot of the, we've, we've received inquiries from Canada, from Europe, from Asia, uh, and most of those plans have been put sort of on the back burner because getting things across borders is, is tricky. We, we have a store locator for those in the U.S. and as business relations sort of normalize, uh, we're super excited about extending into other parts of, of the world. As far as we know, we're not only the first to be, you know, to launch boozy K-Cups in the U.S., but I think we're, that's true globally still at this point too. What's interesting is when we launched, it was somebody out of the UK that found us first. The first phone call I got inquiring into our business was someone in the UK, which wow. I find really interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, we are excited for you to be available in Canada, hopefully very soon. Lucinda, congratulations on all your success. I'm sure this is going to be worldwide very soon. So thank you for being on the show today. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.